Marketing. another edition of Telco Steve's Workbench for 2021. Hey, it takes a long time to do each video because it's you know specific to a telephone that I've actually rebuilt and tested. I had to replace parts and things of that nature. And what we have here today is a Kellogg telephone, Oak Woodwall Telephone. It's a cathedral top with a picture frame front on it. It's a 1910. It's got the serial number 2558 that relates to the 1910 Kellogg Switchboard Supply Catalog. Now who the heck could that be? Hello? Hello, is Milo there? Uh, wow. I, I don't believe so. Well, he had better be, as I've been calling all over the planet for him. Well, I think you're going to have to extend your search a little bit further. Are you that Elisha Gray friend of his? No, I'm just an admirer of his. Oh, you people in that newfangled switchboard nonsense. Well, the newfangled switchboard won him prestige and notoriety, and his work on telephone equipment sets him into one of the forgotten inventors of the 19th century. Did you know that? Well, you tell him that when I get a hold of him, I'm going to send him well into the Beyond Department with the steel tip boot of my left foot. Just like the time I kicked the hand crank and molded it into that curve. Hmm. Well, that solves that design question. Well, the best I can probably do is take a message and give it to a soothsayer or something like that. That's ridiculous. What are you talking about? dinner is on the table, and I am tired of his laziness and obsession of working on his telephone dreams and aspirations. We have chores here, and I am tired of him and his damn excuses. Well, I think Milo might have a darn good reason why he's eluded his chores and dinner tardiness. Yeah, like the time he ran off to California in 1901 with that hussy. Oh, and that lie he came up with, that ridiculous story with... I have to go because of my health. <laughs> then, when he found out, I convinced Wallace DeWolf to suck up to Western Electric and sell out to them. Then, oh my, that bastard is miraculously healed and shows up back in Chicago. I remember that day. You should have seen his face when he showed up and Enos Barton was in his robe and smoking his fine cigars. I tried to get the photographer here when they took it outside, but alas, Milo kicked Edith's ass right there in front of all the neighbors to see, no less. And it took the surgeons four hours to get the bird shot out of Wallace's backside the next day. I had to cook chicken soup for the next three weeks. Hmm, so that's what really happened. Well, what about the hussy? Oh, she was such a tramp. She ran off with the vice president of the United Brass Molders Union in 1903. They say she was the one that started the strike and all the rioting. After Milo found out, he never smiled again. Even while he was trying to screw Western Electric in the rumpus. Oh, and all because of that stupid telephone nonsense. That damn thing has ruined my marriage and my life. Well, what's left of it, that is. Anyway, I know he is hiding there. You tell him to get here or I'm going to run off with Eno's Barton. Wow. Hello? Hello? 
Well, that was something else. I'll tell you. Um, well, here's another edition of Toko Steve's Workbench. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, well, that was kind of a strange call, wasn't it? It's kind of a call from beyond Twilight Zone of telephones. Milo G. Kellogg, he excelled in manufacturing telephone apparatus and equipment. And he was right there with uh, the two fellows from Western Electric. Then, um, then he went off and on his own, and he created a switchboard for the Kinlock Telephone Company in St. Louis, and that propelled him. Um, he started doing more business and, and got his manufacturing together in Chicago, and uh, then the Pan American Exposition. He won the prestigious award there in telephone apparatus. It was a big thing, a big deal. So Milo, um, he t took ill, as you heard, but the story is that he went to California because of his health. And in the meantime, Wallace DeWolf, his brother-in-law, who he had left charge of Kellogg Telephone Switchboard Apparatus um, Company, he uh, Wallace decided to sell out to Western Electric. Western Electric was just jonesing to put Kellogg out of business or take over all of their manufacturing. So, lo and behold, uh, Milo comes back in 19, um, 1902, I believe it was, and uh, he uh, then uh, finds out about the betrayal of Wallace, and what ensues after that is a long court battle between Western Electric and Kellogg Switchboard and Supply, and it lasts all the way up until uh, roughly 1909, and uh, Kellogg did win the court case. However, Milo then passed away. So what you see here is a 1910 Kellogg Oak Wall Telephone. And it is got everything grooving about it. All of the equipment on it is Kellogg. As you can see from the pictures, there's the mouthpiece. As you can see, the brass faceplate of the transmitter that's got the yes, date specific correct plate on it. What I mean by that, look at the serial number down below. That's Those were on the 1910 model manufacturing for Kellogg. It also has a handset. It, <laughs> if you guys doubt that I'm, what I'm saying the truth, look it up, okay? It's got the correct handset. It has a, a transmitter arm that adjusts. Got a nice adjustment to it, brass bells. And, as you heard, it just rang on an incoming call from really who knows where. But it can also, when you put it in your man cave, you put it in your, uh, your basement or something of that nature, you'll be able to show your friends what a cool phone it is. And here's the other beauty about it. It has been remanufactured, rewired. It's been all taken apart. Everything's been cleaned out of it. All the snot, all the grunt, all the cooties, all the viruses, everything has been cleaned. I don't want your germs. You don't want mine. Believe me, that's why. It also has been adapted with a touch tone dial. So now you don't have to fool around with, oh, get the gizmo that puts on the rotary dial that does the touch tone dials, blah, 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 at the cost of 60 bucks, whatever. And you can just do it. So what we'll do is I'll show you how this works. I've got an extension in the other room that uh, is uh, set up for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, you sound like uh, somebody that just called me on the phone. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how coincidental. <laughs> it is. So, are you, are you, what are we going to do? You're going to go, are we going to have lunch, right? I'd like to, yeah. I'm kind of hungry. Okay. So as you can see, I'm talking to my wife, and she can hear me just fine, and I can hear her great. So the phone 
functions just the way it should. As a matter of fact, if you have VoIP service, let's say you have a cable router that provides dial tone, and you're kind of wondering, oh, wait a minute, I'm not sure that my pulse rotary dial is going to work because some systems don't allow that. It's a, a type of signaling for the CO to get dual tone multi-freak DTMF touch tone or pulse rotary signaling. Well, you don't have to worry about it. You've got in here the touch tone. Let's say you have an ATA off of your VoIP router. It's off the switch and, it's, and you're thinking, oh, you know what? That's not going to work. Guess what? Guess again. Yes, it will. Any phone that can plug into an ATA will work. This phone will function correctly. Oh, sorry about that. I'll, t I'll call you back. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. This guy was uh, rewired, as I said, with all cloth wiring, brand new cloth wiring, as you can see. And the components, the transmitter and the receiver, brand new components. I had to do it. Uh, just got to use the old transmitter and the old receiver component. Didn't want to do that. So, but all the parts alone, you put the parts together in a spreadsheet and you add it up for a final total, it's going to come out to about $325. This 1910 Kellogg telephone is going to be something that will be great in your man cave. And boy, what a conversation piece when you show them that it rings when you crank the handle and it rings on an incoming call. It's got brand new wiring in it. All of it's been redone. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy the phone. I uh, want to tell you, thank you very much for watching my videos, by the way. I've got uh, a lot more people that are watching than I ever even conceived. I thought maybe one or two or five or six people would probably watch and uh, ended up with quite a few and, and I honestly really honestly appreciate the really positive comments that I get um, it just gives me it gives me some hope it helps to to continue on and I've got a, a lot planned for other videos so uh, stay in touch you know you can subscribe you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to that's fine uh, it doesn't hurt me one way or the other. I make these videos because this guy's for sale. You can buy him, okay? Please email me at the email address at the end of this video. And we will uh, talk about pricing. Usually the price gets weird because this guy's heavy. He's like about 32 pounds. So shipping is always an issue. Um, but hopefully you'll understand and I think that when you get this phone you'll really love it you'll just as you can see from the pictures it's just an outstanding telephone that's been refurbished and works really great so remember grab the ones you love tell them that you love them and if you've told them 300 times tell them 400 times. If you told them a thousand times, tell them again. We live in a very troubled world. Who knows? Tomorrow could be too late. Make sure that those that you love know that you love them. I want to thank you for watching another edition of Telco Steve's Workbench, and I bid you a fine day. Bye. Thanks for watching. I shall be back. I wish I could stay longer. Good bye. Please. Bye.